Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at Ontario Provincials checking in with 5409 Chargers. This team, absolutely phenomenal. One of the coolest robots I've seen here in the crescendo season so far. And what a unique strategy they're going. This is a robot that purely amps and traps for going the speaker and they've had a phenomenal season so far with as well. As we're recording this after day one, currently ranked six in the division, so we can't wait to see how they're gonna do. But let's take a look at chargers all the way through. They have a really good uh, under the bumper intake that transfers all the way through into this amp and trap mechanism here. We'll be covering that as well as your climber, some of their localization they've been doing. Let's learn more about chargers coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Yo, Daniel, let's start off talking about the strategy and how your team approached the Crescendo game. Uh, you're taking such a unique approach for it. So walk me through, what were the first days like in regards to approaching Crescendo and how did that develop uh, into what the current robot you have now? So actually, once after the game is revealed, we basically decompose the whole game. We come up with these concepts like speaker, amp, trap, and then we weigh them based on a decision matrix that we made up. Uh, so we figure out what is give us the most value, what gives us the most points including points and ranking points. And then after our whole decision matrix, we figure out that trap and amp should be really what we prioritize on because that will give us the most value and then make us farther into the season. So that's why we came up with such a unique um, design and unique matrix and unique decision for the robot. And so after that, our scouting system, what we've been looking for in the whole season is basically a speaker shooter because that would basically uh, compromise with our robot the best since we are really, really specialized in amp and uh, trap. And then because of this uh, specialization, we just forget to look at, um, don't really forget, but we don't really look at speaker at all to make sure that we actually specialize in what we're trying to do the best. So how did you get group consensus on not going with the speaker? Because I can't imagine what that conversation was like uh, with your team to try to get everybody in that right direction. Because, you know, amp in the season is actually harder. And then we realized that more teams, the better teams, and then the really, really top teams will all go for a speaker shooter. And we figured out that we should just try our best to compromise with the robot. And then we came up with this really special design, a really, really good one. It, we are one of the top amp shooters in the whole Canada to make sure that we actually specialize in this area that we want to work at. Let's pass over to side talk about uh, some of the design work that's gone into this, especially the climber as well too, side. So walk me through uh, some of the uh, different design features you want to talk about, and then we'll showcase how the climber works. Sounds good. Yeah, so this year, um, as we knew, our priority was to have a robust uh, mechanism that could climb and trap, and um, just having something that was a proven design. So in the past years, our team has manufactured many elevators. And one of the things that was different for this one was we decided to go with a cascade elevator. So we have a stage two that's attached to a stage three. So as the stage two moves up, the stage three moves up even higher. And the benefit of this design is that once we actually climb up, the hooks go right down to the bottom of the chassis, which increases our overall height and our reach for our trap mechanism, which really helped keep the robot uh, well packaged and drive under the chains in the stage which was one of our priorities as well. So just having, as Yanina said, one mechanism that can do amp and trap while having a robust elevator that has barely had any placement over the year. And another thing that we did this year was we had a lot of FEA that we ran on the parts, so stress tests on, say, the hooks. So the hooks can actually withstand about 800 pounds of force, which is way more than the robot can, the robot weighs, or it'll actually be taking. And there's been many instances where the robots actually climbed on one hook and it has stayed there which is um, definitely one of the big big design benefits from what we've done this year. Can you, can you walk me through kind of what the process of a climb is like? So the process of the climb, so um, as Philip will speak in a bit, so first what we do is we align ourselves with the April tags on the stage, and then we drive up to it, and then once we're aligned, we go straight down onto the chain, and we're up and trapped within about four seconds, which is pretty pretty quick. Let's break down some of these uh, mechanical sus systems. Dylan's going to be covering more about that. Oh, yeah. uh, so let's uh, walk through. Start out from the uh, intake and all the way through. Let's cover some of the other things. And if we can showcase how some of these work as well, too, by enabling the robot, I'd love to check them out. All right. 
So this year, um, in concept, it is pretty simple with a front intake under the bumper here. Um, these two silicone rollers then go into an indexer, which is actually hidden because it's uh, running right under the uh, elevator. One of our biggest issues this year was trying to package everything and having the space. Because the path of that note runs on the bottom of the chassis um, and then up through here to the dunk cartridge, we've had a lot of issues with uh, friction against the metal and the paint. Um, and we really only need friction where the nip, the, where the note is being gripped uh, by these rollers here. So we've covered every piece of metal that the note comes into contact with uh, in Teflon tape. Um, but in doing this, we lost a lot of our bottom chassis space to be able to fit any electronics or anything else that we need. So here is our primary electrical panel, uh, which holds our radio and the stuff that we need quick access to. Um, and then on the underside of the robot, so uh, under here is our electrical panel where we have our PDH, which last year snapped because we put it on the top side of the belly pan and we took a massive hit. Um, so we've learned from our mistakes this year and uh, the main electronics that don't need quick and frequent access are under here and then covered by Lexan. Um, and then part of our check is to go through and uh, make sure that all of these are okay every few matches or so. So something that we thought we were gonna have to struggle with uh, before the season started was actually aligning with that note because you can see that the gap that the note has to come into is super narrow. So we thought that we were gonna have to align straight in the center, but we found that these 3D printed uh, wedges here that we put on either side allows us to pick up a note from almost any direction and any side and it comes straight into the middle, which has been super beneficial to our cycle time and continues to make us the fastest amp robot in Canada. So the note will come through these two intake rollers at the front and then moves through our indexer subsystem here, which is under the elevator. And these belts actually go over the elevator. Getting those belts to work, we, uh, we couldn't find belts long enough. And so we've actually custom welded all the belts under there um, out of uh, poly, polyurethane, I believe. Yep. Um, and then through the indexer, it's picked up by this bottom silicone roller and then shot into the dunk cartridge. And the dunk cartridge uh, is our one mechanism that does both the trap and the amp. Um, and this is controlled by its own elevator. So this is two elevators on the robot. It's the exact same concept as the first stage of this elevator. Um, and this will come up, knock out the uh, trap door or open up the amp. And then to stop that note from and deflect it down, we've got this piece of metal here, which we're calling the cape. Um, this is covered in a $30 barbecue sheet, which is 30% Teflon, um, which is what saved our season because the friction of the note on the metal uh, and on the polycarb caused us a lot of issues. And it wasn't until about two days before our competition that we found that this barbecue sheet is what is going to save our season. And so we have plenty of spares of that because we're going to go through a lot of it. And obviously it's been working out so well uh, for your team of that. Um, looking at provincials and preparing here, any major changes you made for provincials? And if you uh, were to qualify for world championships, any major things to be looking at changing? Um, mechanically, no, and design, no. Um, pro however, the programmers are working on different autos and different cycle times and different things that they can change. And I'll let a programmer speak to that. Um, well, let's bring in Philip to talk more about uh, your programming side of things and uh, walk me through what you're, what you're using overall and then any future plans as well too. So this year one of our priorities was to step up our auto and driver assist game and in order to do so we've really invested a lot of time into our vision system. Uh, this year we for the first time we implemented photon vision. We're running three cameras on two orange pies, two of which are running um, field localization. Now, we're making use of this field localization by uh, not only providing driver assists, but also uh, allowing us to... Oh, I messed it up. Okay. That's all right. Um, so, essentially, it allows us to get far ac more accurate autos in comparison to before. We are able to run faster, and the driver assist is really what allowed us to s step up our cycle times. For example, our driver Alexander is able to align to the amp automatically by pressing a button. Uh, which it, it makes it really quick. We have also implemented a trap auto align. So what the robot essentially does is when he presses the button, it dynamically searches for the nearest trap and then it aligns with that uh, April tag, where it gets close and then uh, creeps forward. And this allows us to get really accurate and fast cycle times on our trap as well. And it really takes a lot of slack off of the drivers for aligning. Uh, he still does have to make a couple adjustments and we're still tweaking at the moment, but it's been amazing and I'm really happy that we invested the time to develop this, these systems. For future, we do have a third camera here and we do have the possibility of experimenting with object detection for our intake, possibly the note, but at the moment that's not something we have functional.
Well, 50 for 09, what a cool strategy your team has decided to go with, and great to see it pay off so far. We can't wait to see how you do here at Provincial, so good luck the rest of the way, but thanks for uh, making such a cool robot. This is very inspirational, and wish you best of luck here at Provincials. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.